So if anything like me, or probably lots of dentists when they start out in practice, they come out of dental school, they're feeling really good, really confident about their skills. You step into a few extractions, they go, okay, you kind of do what you were taught in school, and teeth come out pretty good. And then you run into a few where things do not go so well at all, and it is not fun. And then you run into that a few more times, and then you start to think to yourself, hmm, you know, there's got to be something wrong with these elevators or these forceps, or <laughs> there's got to be better tools that are going to get these teeth out easier. And you start looking at everything except the person in the mirror or the one who's holding the tools and just accepting the fact that maybe you need a little more education and a little more experience to be able to get teeth out properly. Now, in my quest for looking for instruments, I came across these things. And what I found was basically the 1C Kuplin gouge elevator and an EL5SX elevating luxator. This is a 5 millimeter elevating luxator. And you look at the ends of these elevators. When I saw them in the drawer, <laughs> I thought to myself, I could use these to put my shoes on in the morning like a shoehorn. Why would I be able to use them to take teeth out? I could barely get my 301 elevator between the teeth. How am I going to get this thing between the teeth? And, you know, being new, I thought to myself, okay, well, you know what, let's try it out because it's in the drawer. It maybe has a function and maybe I can get it to work better than what I'm using now. So, of course, I had my assistant put it on the tray. You know, we pop it out for an extraction. And, of course, I'd be in there trying to wedge this between the teeth. And I'm thinking to myself now, you know, maybe this is better because there's a broader surface. And if I happen to be leaning on an adjacent tooth, I'm not applying as much force. And, you know, I'm trying to justify why this instrument might be in the uh, supply area. Now, what I found out, and it wasn't until years later, I actually found out what these things are for. And <laughs> it blew me away because I thought, yeah, of course, that makes sense. So what these are for, what they're really good for, is situations where you're having a tough time getting a spot to fulcrum off of. And that could be, say, in a third molar region. They're really applicable back here. When you have a trough cut around your tooth and perhaps you're having a difficult time engaging, one thing that these are really good at doing is levering off of this big buckle shelf back here and engaging the distal portion of these teeth. Now, you got to think about this a little bit. This is something I never thought about either. In dental school, every oral surgery textbook that I looked at had you know, a picture of an elevator and it would be on the mesiobuccal line angle of a tooth and there'd be some squiggly lines next to it showing you know, kind of what you do with it. And you're trying to envision <laughs> what you're actually trying to do in the mouth. And it really doesn't portray things very well. And it sounds really dumb, but you know, every time that I approached an extraction, I kind of had it in my mind that that was the only place that you could put the elevator the mesiobuccal line angle, like I didn't think about the fact that you could elevate on the distal or you could elevate on the buccal or the palatal or wherever on these teeth, right? Anywhere that you can get that elevator and get a good purchase with a bony fulcrum, you're in business. And you can even cut directly into the tooth and sink a, you know, a Cogswell or something into the center of the tooth and then be, you know, controlling the tooth in all directions to luxate it. There's all different ways of doing it. And distal buccal elevation is something that never crossed my mind. But when you're approaching a third molar, especially a vertically impacted third molar, let's say it's down a little bit, like it's somewhat erupted, but it's partly impacted and vertical, that's a great situation for these. You can get in under that distal undercut and fulcrum off of this bone. You'll get a great purchase on there to lift the tooth up and out. It also prevents you from putting all that stress on here, which inevitably you're gonna end up pushing a bit on the distal of this lower second molar, which sometimes will damage the bone back there, could even damage the tooth if you're using not the best technique, and that'll cause the patient a lot of sensitivity. So by sticking to the distal buckle and using these larger elevators, you'll actually protect this tooth a little bit more, and it'll help you to lift these teeth out. Now, if you have a slight distoangular elevation, same thing, it's great for that because actually now the tooth is leaning more that way, you're better able to get in under the tooth and catch some of the tooth to get a good purchase and then lift it up from the socket. So instead of putting these in your shoe room at home to put your shoes on, bring them back to work, sterilize them, and put them to use taking out some impacted third molars.